Yes. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Could you, yeah, adjust this one? Okay. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, how you guys analyze cells on or in biomaterials. So this is very basic, but maybe some people are already familiar with this how to analyze it, but some of them maybe you are not familiar that much. So this lecture can be helpful for you guys. So this is our schedule. Sorry. This is our schedule. So last time I'm I talked about how you culture the cell from different methodology, direct or indirect, and using nanoparticle or gel or scaffold. And today, so now you successfully culture cell with biomaterial. And then how how will you analyze? This is very important. So so that's why today I'm going to talk about how you analyze after successful culture the cell with biomaterials. So it seems this is a very routine work when you develop or when you make your biomaterial. So yeah, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk following this consequence. MTT, CCK, MTS. Maybe some of them you already did a lot, but I think you are not that much. Uh, you are you didn't know about the basic principle in detail. Yeah, MTT, MTS, CCK. Could you raise your hand if you have any difference among among these three different methodology? Okay, after this lecture, you will know. The live and dead. I know you did a lot live and dead. The how they are stained. And then you did, you try to say you are, you are doing some proliferation test. Is it really a proliferation test? I'm asking. And then maybe you already know this LDH. This is not layer dehydrogenase hydroxide. It's another, some, Cell, some ingredient from the cell when they are damaged from the rupture of the cell membrane. So LDH, I'm going to talk about. And then when you check some apoptosis of your cell, how did you do? How will you do? And then basic ICC, follow the NAPI, and then for checking focal adhesion, vinculin or same. So yeah, according to the last methodology, you successfully culture the cell with this hard metal or ceramic material or polymer material on, on the scaffold, and you culture the cell and in media, right? So after certain hours or certain days, you guys have to analyze. So in terms of the MTT, MTS, CCK, uh, they all have the same hypothesis. Means that each live cell has same metabolic activity in cytosol. Most probably from NADH dependent cellular oxido, oxido reductase enzyme in mitochondria. Okay? So from this hypothesis, so we can say that maybe this MTT, MTCCK, they measure this enzymatic activity. So let's imagine if your cell, you have 100 cells, but your cell have different metabolic activity, how you analyze the cell viability based on this enzymatic activity? So that is why we hypothesize that all cell, each cell have same metabolic activity in terms of this oxidoreductase enzyme. And then now, we can measure this enzyme activity and then convert this enzyme activity to cell viability. Okay? 
So first generation of this oxygen reductase enzyme activity test is MTT. This MTT is the first generation and a calorimetric assay for assessing cell metabolic activity. So NADPH dependent cellular oxidoreductase reductase enzyme may reflect the number of the viable cells present. Okay? So they assume that each cell has the same metabolic activity. So these enzymes are capable of reducing the tetrajolium dye, MTT, blah, 3, blah, 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 to its insoluble formazam, which has a purple color. Okay? So basic methodology is like, if you put the MTT dye, this MTT dye is reduced in the mitochondrial cyto cytoplasm, cytosol. And then the MTT color is changed to purple. Okay? And then this is the insoluble formagen. They are converted. So this is very important, insoluble. So that is why we need DMSO for solubilizing formazan and the UV 490 nanometer was used for detecting observance. Okay? So basic thing is that they analyzed the enzymatic activity from the viable cell and then this MTT convert to the insoluble formazan by your mitochondrial enzyme called oxidoreductase enzyme and then because of this they are insoluble we need DMSO and then check the observance. Okay? And then from this time, they, they are using 10% uh, added MTT. Okay? So let's imagine if you have 100 microliter, you can add 10 microliter of, the, of MTT in your media to check this MTT assay. So when you look at uh, this picture, MTT, they are converted to insoluble formazan, okay, from this uh, re reduction enzyme activity from the mitochondria in cytosol, okay. So let's say you treat the nanoparticle or some toxic material to your cell, and then some cells are damaged, right? And then your MTT will say how they analyze the cell viability. They analyze only this uh, mitochondria uh, oxidoreductase activity. So which means that if your cell are damaged, but this damage cannot affect the mitochondria activity, then this cell can be counted by MTT assay. Or if your cell is a little damaged or alive, but somehow this mitochondrial activity is damaged directly, and then your MTT will say cannot be, your MTT cannot be converted to the insoluble formazan. So when you analyze your cell by MTT or what is kind of MTT regarding your say, you have to remember this MTT is not Superman, okay? They only analyze how your mitochondria can convert so this MTT to formazan dye from this NADPH dependent oxidoreductase reductase enzyme. Okay? You should keep in mind this point. So this is the MTT structure, very com complicated. But anyhow, if you look at this H is added, right? So they are reduced. MTT is reduced by your mitochondria enzyme. Hmm. So in this time, the MTT is uh, converted to insoluble formazan. Okay? And then people want to develop more simple or more good this MTT dye. Because the MTT dye is not, when they are converted to insoluble formazan, they are insoluble. So they need another step, adding DMSO. So now they want to develop this dye, similar but different form. And then you have to remember this. So okay, you successfully adding the DMSO 
and then check their observance. You know, what is the meaning of the real observance? Okay. So they are called observance spectral photometry or optical density assay. There are many uh, methodology names calling this assay. Observance spectral photometer, optical density, and yeah, all of the things are regarding this simple principle. Let's you have initial light intensity called II. And then when they are certain your, solu your solution are observed. So some part of your initial light that can be observed, which means saved in this your liquid. And then some of them are trans uh, penetrated, and then which means transmittance intensity. So your machine in fourth floor or fifth floor, they generate the certain certain wavelengths of intensity that they only detect the, at the transmittance intensity. And from these two difference, initial and transmittance, they calculate the observance, how they are observed from your solution, from your color, okay? And then based on, there is no reflection. Actually, all, all over your light can reflect, right? But they are assumed that there is, there is no reflection or ignorable. Okay? Based on this assu assumption, they analyze it. Basic thing, input, detect, and then they calculate the observance. Okay? So now we can start to show calculation. So how you calculate transmittance? Transmittance is initial, I mean, sorry, uh, transmittance, this later one divided by initial. So the value is from zero to one, right? And then this transmittance percentage is multiplied 100. So what's the meaning of this transmittance one? Which means that no observance, right? This initial and late transmittance when they are same, and then T equal one no observance. T equal 0 0.5, which means 0 0.5 is transmittance, and then another 50% they are observed. What is the meaning of T0? 100% they are observed in this solution. Okay. And then people want to co uh, correlate this transmittance to other concentration of your solution, which means color change. But they, 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 but they never found the correlation. That is why they need another certain value like minus log t. Okay? Minus log t, just memorize it. There is no nothing. Minus log t, so t is i transmittance divided by i initial. And then this minus is go to this part, and then they convert it like this. So just imagine observance, the value from your fourth floor or fifth floor spectroscope, spectroscopimetry or any kind of UV spectrophotometer, the observance is based on minus log t. Okay. So you have to you have to consider what is the meaning of the observance. So before understanding the observance, let's see. Your initial is 100. Your observance is zero observed intensity, and then transmittance intensity is 100. 90 observance, 10 intensity transmittance. 99 observance, remaining one. Okay? Now we can make this, what is this one? T, transmittance, right? Transmittance, 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Transmittance pen percentage, 100, 10, 1. Because multiply 100. And then observance is just minus log t, 0, 1, 2. Okay? So, which means that if you have observance 1, what does it mean? From 100, 90% is observed, 10% is transmitted. If you have observance 2, what does it mean? 99% observed, 
one person is transmitted. Okay? But if you really look at how they are observed, but when you look at the observance, one and two, two, two time chain, twice, twice difference, right? But when you look at this observance, how much they are differ? Just 10%. So this is um, this thing what I want to say. Let's say if you have observance one, observance two, wow, two time difference. But according to my view, just 10% difference. Because when you when you highlight this observance, okay. So um, that is why if uh, I always say that if your value is over one, maybe it's hard to believe. Maybe. Definitely, they are, they are different, one and two, but only minor difference, just 10% difference. So, and then what happened? Observance 0.5, okay, which means uh, transmittance 35%, 31 per 31st percent, and then observance around 70%. <coughs> so, observance value 0.5, which means real. Intensity when they are observed is 70% are observed. Observance 1, 90%. Observance 2, 99% observed. Okay? So when you obtain this value from your machine, uh, you always think about how they are converted to the real observance intensity. Okay? So this 70, 90, 99. But when you get this one and two, yeah, at the same time, they have some significant value. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Because when you correlate the concentration of your solution, like reddish, how they are reddish, how they are purple, they are only correlate with this observance, not this transmitted or this real observance value. That is why researcher just check this observance as a minus log t value. So you have to remember this Beer -Lam Lambert law. Okay? Beer Lambert, two people, they combine their CR theory. So you have initial intensity, this is your solution. And then they are transmitted. But when your solution are more concentration, concentrated, like this uh, blue, less transmittance which means more observed, okay? And then what happened? Your solution volume is increased, which means more time to penetrate your solution. And then compared to this, there, even though they have same concentration, this light can penetrate more length, their transmittance can decrease compared to this one, right? And then, when you increase the concentration from this more length, more decrease. Okay? So you can consider this point. More penetration length, and then the, the concentration of your solution. They determine how you obtain the transmittance intensity. This is called Beer Lambert law. Okay? So, from the Beer Lambert law, observance equal E I C. Okay? E means molar absorption coefficient, which means constant. Let's say if you have empty T solution, your empty solution have constant molar absorption coefficient. If you have CCK, they have same molar absorption coefficient. So depending on your assay tool, is the molar absorption, absorption coefficient is the, is the same. This is constant. I, light past length, the width of the qubit, also constant. When you have some same qubit, you have always have same light past length. When you put same same uh, midi, same CCK solution in the 96 well for MTT or CCK, let's say 100 microliter. All, all the time, your light path length is same because your light from the machine can penetrate the 100 microliter, okay? But 
from your horrible pipetting, sometime one day microliter, sometime nine microliter, what will happen? This light path length, length will change. Can affect your result. Okay? More or less amount, more or less transmittance, more or the adoption money. Uh, less amount, less transmittance, more of more yeah, more adoption, right? And then see each molar concentration. Let's say concentration of your formagen. Okay? So how there how your formagen, this purple color is darker. So when you look at this one, E and I is constant most of the time if you are proper pipetting. And then always observance is depending on your concentration. Okay? So that is why people want to look at this beer lamet law and then why your pipetting is very important for this. And then we hypothesize that your molar absorption coefficient is the same. But what will happen if you put your nanoparticle in this solution? Sometimes this molar absorption coefficient can change. How, how will you know? You can directly compare just nanoparticle with this your CK solution and then without anything CK solution. Check the observance. When there are no difference, this is no difference. E is same. But when you, when you see some difference, they are changed. And then you can substrate or you can add that value for your real estate. So always think about when you do CCK or MTT, your measurement device is light. Light always can reflect it, can be observed from your solution, from your nanoparticle, from anything. Okay. So we can say this is more purple, this is more light purple. So at a glance you can know this is more high concentrated. But we want to get real value, absolute value. That is why we need UV spectrophotometer. We need machine. And that your machine can use beer metal law. They only show this observance. Okay? And then people want to know how you calculate, how you uh, quantify this intensity of your color. You already knew, learn from your elementary school. Let's say you have purple color. What is the most efficient laser light? they can observe very well this purple color. Opposite, right? Purple color, opposite color, like uh, yellow green. So if you look at this uh, purple, you can think about opposite color. And then purple opposite is yellow, yellow green around here. So that is why your entity of say can measure this purple color based on 500, uh, 570 nanometer wavelengths. Okay? Let's imagine your color is blue. And then you have to use reddish color, around 600. Okay? But your color is uh, this red. And then you have to use blue color, blue laser, around 4, 550. Okay? So that's why your CCK MTS turned to this yellow sheet, right? That's why you need blue sh laser. That's why you have to do 450, 500, 450 or 470. Your opposite laser. And then the question is, you are using 96 well, and then you put, uh, let's say you are um, MTT or CCK will say after a certain time, the color change is not that severe. And then how you get the good result? Good result means more observance. You can increase the volume from 100 to 200. And then your observance value is increased. Okay? And at, um, another word, if your color is too dark, and then you can decrease your uh, each well volume to from 100 to 50. And you can get more or less observance. Or you can dilute. 
VTW. Okay, and then I told you before, if you incorporate nanoparticle and then directly measure the observance, you always consider nanoparticle can interfere the light. You have to confirm it by your hand. So from now on, I'm, I'm begging that I do not want to ask again. Which means, if you show me just new particle, show us without any comment, I checked blank, nanopart blank and nanoparticle with CCK solution, there's no difference from this range. So I checked the nanoparticle CCK directly, something like Okay. But if you transfer your this um, converted media or solution to the another well, there is no reason to check the nanoparticle interference. But uh, but I am sure that your pipetting is always, always horrible. Yeah, better is, uh, most important thing is that just directly checking if there is no difference, no interference. Okay. So this first generation, LO MTT, they are reduced by mitochondrial dehydrogenase, okay? And then they are colored to purple. So instead of formagen converted, so we need DMSO. And then you need a lot of time, four hours. Four hours for converting this MTT to formagen, and then you have to add DMSO again. in the two step. So this, very inefficient. So the people like me develop another thing, MTS, second generation, water soluble, which means we don't need DMSO to solubilize formagen. Okay, single step, and then they are developed. The color developed on within two and three hours. So when you look at this uh, MTS, little different from the previous MTT. Okay. But at the same time, there this link is open and then reduced from this. Uh, and then this MTS solution, they have another mediator. So even though uh, you, you can add one solution, your MTS solution has this MTS plus this mediator. And then from this media mediator and this MTS dye, this mitochondria dehydrogenase, they convert it into soluble formagen. Okay good, but two or three hours too long, Jesus. So I make WST8, which means CCK, AKA CCK. This is third generation. Water soluble, single step, more soluble than MTS. So from one hour you can detect. And then even other assay is possible at ending point, like Western PCR DNA, okay, because uh, because of this more solubility, there's not much of toxicity to your cell. So basically, you have substrate like MTCCK or WSTA solution dye. They are converted to the uh, soluble formation. Okay, from this your dye, from colorless to the orange. Okay, this CCK solution also have this. Uh, mediator, electromediator. Okay, so this is a direct comparison. You have Hella cell, and then they directly measure CCKN, third generation, MTS, XTT, second generation, MTT, first generation. Okay, how you look at MTT? Oh my god, observance is very, uh, very, uh, not much of difference depending on the cell number, right? And then the observance value is very low. But what happened to the first, second generation, MTS, XTT? It's good, but super good is CCK. So more sensitive. Okay, that's why in iTrend, we, we are just using CCK8. And, and then, if you have any question, refer to Aegis Itox manual about this. Uh, Maybe not much people doing the Western official or DNA extraction at the end point of CCK, but if you have if you have some limitation of your sample, there is one possibility. Hmm. But always you have to confirm using new sample. <clears throat> so
So conclusion, we can say like that MTT insoluble, MTCK soluble wavelengths on this one uses a lot. Uh, yes, and convenience, more convenient CCK, speed, more speedy CCK, repeatability and stability, more good. Please refer to this website. And then I'm going to tell you about Presto Blue, fourth generation. From now, from until now, we are talking about the Formazan derived molecule. So this one is Rizazurin. So they dye can convert it to water soluble Rizazurin. Single step, no need MSO, faster than CCK. <clears throat> that is why I call it four generation. Even 10 minutes develop. And then also, T1, bacteria can make it. That is why I, I like. I check I using this Presto Blue for checking E. coli or bacteria viability. And then other say possible at the ending point as well, Western PCR DNA better than CCK because they are more or less toxic. And then because of that, further continuous assays possible, like proliferation or western, for example, you wanna check one, three, five, seven days of proliferation using Presto Blue, and then one hour treat, read, treat of Presto Blue, reading, change new media, culture, up to three days. And then another checking, and then change new media, and then five fifth day you can check. Using one sample, you can check different time point, one, three, five days. But in case of CCK, mm, yeah, PCK is more toxic, so they can decrease. Okay, so in iTrend, if you want to do this one, three, five days, seven days of proliferation test, press the blue, and then we have uh, this one. Easy, easy side, sorry, easy side talks. This is less toxic than CCK, but maybe people company said similar with this press the blue. So easy side talks, WST, and then press the blue. They are recommended to check to check this continuous proliferation test. Okay, let's look at this one. Within 10 minutes, this press blue, uh, they, can, they can develop this kind of mm, value. But MTT, after 20 hours later, they can check this one. And then this press blue, they can detect by color or laser, both of them. And then depending on your dye, how different the EC50 effective concentration to kill this bacteria from this uh, chemical? More than 10 times difference. Okay, so that is why you have to choose the right dye for assessing your your material viability, your chemical viability EC50. Okay, so this is a pressable reagent toxic to cell from the QNA from Presto Blue, while solution containing uh, regurin, the active ingredient in Presto Blue, are not toxic to cell. Other reports clearly show that cell viability is affected depending on the length of the exposure, concentration or usually to which they are subjected. In our experience, unlikely that cell will be adversely affected by exposure to Presto Blue region. If a second condition remain within the cell's incubation time, 10 to 22 hours, unlikely, which means it's safe, safe. Cell can be incubated up to 24 hours, the presence of pressed the reagent, and then for the culture, simply remove the reagent from the cell and replace it with gross media. Okay? But you always concern, raise your question, maybe some change will happen to your cell. It's true. But Compared to the other CCK, maybe Presto Blue is more safe. Okay. So yeah, from now on, I'm talking about the cell activity. So we have in iTrend CCK and WST and then Presto Blue. Okay. 
you can consider these three different cell activity dye. And then proliferation. So you want to check proliferation of your cell, right? So what, what will you do? Songmin, if we want to check proliferation, what, what will you do? Did you? Just, I mean, what is the simplest way to check proliferation? Simple, simple way. Mm. You don't have any any money. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good. Like that, directly you can count the cell number. Or indirectly you can check by other some die. So. Like Songmin said, you can count the cell each by day from the DAPI stain images or cell counting machine. You can literally yeah, count the number of cell. Okay, very simple, very easy, but inconvenient. But inconvenient, right? But sometimes it's a very golden standard. And then. You can do CFU assay, right? Colony forming unit. Let's say your your cell has very proliferated cell, like stem cell or the fibroblast. You see the cell less than maybe 200 cell number in each well, and you check the how they are how they form this colony forming. Okay, so more colony means more proliferation. Okay, so if we want to check Stemless difference among the cell line, you check this shape for your cell. You have phases 3 shed cell, phases 10 shed cell. You want to compare their stemless. How simple you do? Just you count 200 cell number and then put four well, four well and then culture them over time. And then count how they are formed, the shape for your colony. And in that way, we can do TCK or pressed blood say, right? And then, but you have to do one, three, five, seven days, okay? So proliferation literally means that how they are proliferate, how the one cell can convert to two cell, two cell convert to the four cell, okay? And then this, when you show like this, we can say, oh, they are proliferate, okay? But you cannot say. This PAJ align is better proliferation rate than PU random. You have to remember the proliferation rate, rate, and proliferation. Proliferation rate is speed. Okay? Speed means how they are jump. Let's say this jump in 20% 20, 20 jump every two days, right? But also this blue is 20% jumped. But, and then proliferation rate is the same. But only because of this initial difference of this among four groups, their final proliferated cell number is different. Different. Okay? So actually, if you think about the proliferation, always people can think proliferation rate. Okay? So you have to use the right term. If you want to do 135 dead, and then you can see this blue is more higher inclined, more um, maybe 30 or 40 percent increase every two days. You can say proliferation rate is increased in PLJ aligned than PU random. But when they have same slope, proliferation rate is same. And then you can say after uh, initial difference of adhesion, these four groups have similar proliferation rate, but because of similar proliferation rate, they uh, this blue PLG line has more proliferate, a uh, more uh, cell number at day five. Okay. And then if we want to highlight proliferation rate, this three or five days value observance can be divided by day one. Okay. Day one, and then you can see the how the how your cell number is increased based on this indirect assay. Okay? So indirect test means that this indirect, when you do CCK, this observance is based on mitochondrial activity. 
dehydrogenase. So that is why I say indirect. And the most direct way is idiostain. Previously, they are mentioned BRDU. So BRDU, you have to use uh, radioactive la labeled, which means you are, your body can be damaged some, somehow. Radioactive. So that is why this is not radioactive. But EDU stain, you can get these cut images. This green one is EDU dye. Blue one is DAP. So this EDU dye can be combined with uh, your nucleus. So what is their principle? So from this uh, cell cycle, most of the time, uh, this S phase, the cell. Mm, let's say growth, DNA synthesis, which means 2N to 4N, and then G2, growth and proliferation for mitosis, and then mitosis. So through this S phase, your DNA can be doubled. Okay? So when the DNA can be doubled, uh, this click IT plus EDU stain dye, they are easily attached to your DNA as an analog. Okay? But original BRD will say the, this dye cannot directly attach to your this DNA. So we have to uh, clip the DNA using certain harsh solution. So it takes some it takes time and it's not easy to detect. So that is why this expensive ED will say that can easily accessible to the analog during the S phase DNA synthesis. And then, because of this easy dye assessment, you can detect the green signal. So, EDU staining is the most accurate proliferation detection method based on the incorporation and measurement of nuclear site analog in newly synthesized DNA during S phase with BRDU, a commonly used analog. Thus, this BRDU, somehow we change, the, change this thing, and then they are, they are incorporate as a nucleus analog. So BRDU label DNA is quantitatively using anti-BRDU antibody following DNA denaturation by harsh method, HCL heat enzyme, to expose the BRDU molecule previously. And this step is time consuming and difficult to perform consistently. So, uh, the effect, sample, integrity, quality, and then it's not easy to stain with other antibody, antibodies, challenging. So that is why this is the old method. That is why this click IT EDU cell pressure kit for imaging provides a superior alternative to BRD assay for measuring cell proliferation. So EDU, this EDU is another nucleoside analog of cymidine. And then is incorporated into the DNA during active DNA synthesis in the acid phase. So with click IT EDU, mild fixation and determined permeabilization is sufficient for the small molecule-based click IT EDU detection region to gain access to DNA. So simply, this uh, uh, original thing is BRDU. They are combined, the DNA, during acid phase, and then this anti-BRDU antibody should be attached for having the, this green signal, but very, very harsh, and then it's not easy to co-stain with another antibody. That is why they develop another dye called EDU. EDU can also, as a DNA dialogue, they can, analog, they can combine as analog of cymidine, and then this EDU dye can access without any harsh denature. And then you can get this green signal easily, and you can co-stain with that P in any kind of antibody. But very expensive. But I have, we have. Mm. You can do. So this meaning that when you change the EDU staining time, like two hours, which means that two, from within two hours, how your cell proliferate, how your cell, your DNA can convert to the, convert to the double. So if you uh, culture your EDU dye for four hours or for eight hours, from that time point, how their how their DNA 
are doubled. So this is, this is really direct assay to check the proliferation. Okay? How the S phase are involved from your cell fraction. But for that, you have to synchronize the cell from serum starvation. Because all your cell line have different cell cycle. So from FBS free condition, you have to synchronize the cell, which they have uh, all have same cell cycle. So live and dead, golden standard for cytotoxicity. Live cell are distinguished by the presence of ubiquitous intracellular esterase activity determined by the dynamic conversion of the virtually non fluorescent cell permanent calcium AM to intensively fluorescent calcium, which is very thin with live cell. So the green signal from live cell from the intensity of calcium. Your original live and dead dye, calcium AM, non fluorescent cell permanent, and then they are converted to the intensely fluorescent calcium from the your intracellular esterase activity, and then well retain your cell. Okay, so calcium AM, live dye, and dye dye, red component is cell impermanent. Okay, this dye they cannot go inside, and therefore only enters cell with damaged by membrane. When your cell membrane are ruptured, now this red dye can go inside, and then dying cell. Red fluorescence is generated upon binding to DNA. So this red component, your dye, they, they binding with DNA through the rupture of the cell membrane, and then they, are, they can show red signal. OK? So let's say you have green things. What does it mean, green? Cell permanent live calcium AM can go in enter, and then from the esterase, their uh, non fluorescence dye can, converted, can be converted to intensively fluorescence calcium, okay? And then well stain in cytoplasm, okay? And then what will happen? This, this red only. Previously, maybe this, uh, maybe not previously, this red dye cannot penetrate to the cell. When the cell membrane is intact, but because of their damage, this red dye can bind the DNA and then convert the color to red. Okay. It's okay. But what will happen? They are combined them together. Red and green. Your red dye can go inside from through the DNA penet penetration, cell membrane rupture, and then bind the DNA. At the same time, your red dye and your green dye, calcium AM, can go inside. And then, even though the cell membrane are ruptured, your enzyme can activate and then can convert your calcium AM to calcium. And then, green fluorescence. So they are ongoing that. OK? So we can count these two dye co-localization dead cell. Because always cell membrane ruptured. Or you can categorize three things. Cell only red, red and green signal together, or only red signal. You can categorize three types. Or when you categorize two types, red, red, red plus green, and green. Okay? So you always remember this concept. How the live dead stain, stain your cell. Okay? So, as you know, live and dead is not always black and white. There are some gray area. This gray area is revealed by this red and green stain. Okay? So question, red and green together possible? Possible. Meaning, cell membrane rupture, but somehow their enzyme activity remain. They are ongoing dead. So that's why if you incubate this cell over time, this green signal is gone. Because from the cell membrane rupture, this uh, calcium, green fluorescence, can go out. And then only red signal appear. Okay? 
tips for having less than a lot. Don't wash or don't suction. And then you can see many red cells. Because when they are dead, they are easily floating. But a lot of background. So you can adjust the background from your dye. <laughs> On a particle toxicity, live and dead is golden standard. You should not believe PCK. Okay? Because your hand is already horrible. Live and dead is golden standard. That is why I continuously tell you, show me live and dead. Okay? Please refer these two paper. And then like this. Yeah, oh, yeah, there are a lot of dead cells. How can I obtain it? I didn't wash it. Hmm. Or gently suction using your pipette. Not the suction machine. The pipe, little pipette and suction the, by your hand, and then you can get this many red signal from your dye, uh, from your things. So always you have to show this cell vibrancy from CCK or WST and the live and dead image together. And then people, oh, okay, this is true. But when you show this one, ooh, yeah, okay. And then in high impact journal also, you can see this kind of live and dead images and then from this live the images, you can do cell viability test from these images, or you can separately do the CCK assay to support these live the images. But if you are short of time, what will you do? I suggest live and then, not CCK. Only one well is okay, live and then. Hmm. But CCK, and least five or six n number, right? Live and then, just one well, two well is okay. They can represent your result. LDH. Yeah, LDH is not the material name. This LDH is uh, lactate dehydrogenase. Okay? Direct measurement of cell membrane damage. From the CCK, when you want to say cell viability, okay? And LDH, the y axis is cytotoxicity. Okay? Cytotoxicity is contrast meaning of cell viability. 100% cell viability, which means 0% cytotoxicity. 100% cytotoxicity means that 0% cell viability. So how you obtain this one? Yeah. So potential cytotoxicity events on this were evaluated by uh, quantitatively from extracellular release Originally, they are from cytosolic inside of cell lactate dehydrogenase using this LDH assay. This LDH originally inside of cell, but your cell membrane rupture now it's time to go outside. And then this LDH, when they are released extracellularly, this kit measure the extracellular release amount of LDH. Okay, so this meaning that. After membrane rupture, they can measure the LDH. But when your cell are damaged, not membrane rupture, you cannot detect. You have to consider this point. Okay, so so the LDH kit is cytox 96 non radioactive acetoxic assay. Calorimetry alternative to radioactive cytos. Toxicity assays. Measure release of LDH, an indicator of cytotoxicity, non radioactive, time saving assay. This kit is, okay, quantitatively measure LDH, stable cytosolic enzyme that release upon cell lysis, in much the same way as chrome 51, it released in radioactive assay. So previously, before this, LDH assay, they are using this radioactive. Radioactive lively, so they use very specific, they have to utilize very specific machine because they can harm your body. So instead of this radioactive, this LDH, they can use. Little LDH in culture supernatus is measured with a 30 minute copper enzyme assay that results in the conversion of the tetrajolium salt into red formazan product. 
also they are using formosan so this int okay when the ldh are released from the liquid cell ldh and then they add lactate and int together in your dye lactate converted ldh to pyruvate and then int through this pathway they are formosan change so from this lactate to pyruvate int formosan you can detect the LDH amount. This is lactate is some kind of mediator. And then you can convert. You, when you use this kit, you manually lysis your cell. You have a shed, you lysis your shed cell from this kit. Some buffer, some soap buffer, like SDS, and then you can get LDH amount, total LDH amount from maximum. And then, how your nanoparticle, your, your material, can induce release of LDH from the cell. So you can do this percentage. And then, another way is that, uh, this recent one, cell talks green cytotoxicity assay, or tunnel assay, real-time cell death assay with multiplexing compatibility. When you do this uh, LDH assay, this at the determined time, you have to do one hour later, one day later, three days later. But you didn't know how they they start apoptosis, how they dead, when they dead, and then real time. Aqueous toxicity determination is exposure out to three days. Plus the protocol allow kinetic analysis and the point determination. Multiply with obtain more data per well. Yeah, refer these things. So like that, oh, okay, I'm gonna sh share this video. The cell tox screen cytotoxicity assay measures the loss of cell membrane integrity. The assay contains a non-toxic dye that binds to the DNA of dead or damaged cells, but is excluded from viable cells. Cell, Once a cell undergoes cell. a cytotoxic event, the They're dye damaged. binds to exposed DNA and produces a fluorescent signal. The cell tox green dye can be delivered either with the cells at plating or with the test compound at dosing requiring no extra reagent steps. The exceptional photostability of the dye means you can collect time course data from the same well over a period of up to 72 hours. The dye is ideal for determining toxic effects of treatments throughout an extended exposure or as an endpoint determination. Scale the assay to fit your workflow from 96 to 1536 well played formats. So you got the point, right? Your cell, when they're intact, this dye cannot contact, cannot combine with your DNA. But your cells start to damage your cell member rupture. And then this dye can combine, sorry, combine your cell and then they start to show this green fluorescence during the apoptosis. So only fragmented DNA, your dye, can combine. But undamaged supercold DNA, they can combine. And then they did not label to any radioactive color. Okay? So from these same things, Turner will say in histology or using this uh, in vitro study also possible. This tunnel say they die the damaged DNA. Okay, so actually when when let's imagine when your cells start to die, first thing rupture of the membrane, some DNA release, and then uh, any when the cell membrane ruptured, the DNA can be intact, right? Over time the DNA is damaged and then also fragmented, and then they this die can combine them. So this is this is meaning of the late stage of the apoptosis.
So, so this is another high technique, annexing PI staining for checking apoptosis. So you have to remember, for annexing PI staining, you should not do fixation. When you fix a cell, you are a terrible person. What is, what is the mechanism? No, normally, cell membrane, like organ, organ like this, extracellular cellular. And then, when, they, when the, your cells start to apoptosis, this uh, PS, phosphatidylene cellin, they can, originally they are always inside, intracellularly, but they are converted outside. Okay? And then, your dye, annexin V, can combine this PS. Okay? So, and then, your PI is a dye that can combine only DNA. So, let's say, viable cell, no labeling. Apoptosis, they started, this red signal combined with PS from the converted to the extracellular. So, green. Necrotic cell, only PI stained. Okay? Another way is more better. So, anesin FITC, anesin we bind the PS with high affinity on the excess of the calcium. So, when your cells start to apoptosis, PS can be converted to the extracellular and then anesin V FITC bind. PS, inner layer, viable cell, early stage, PS exposed to cell metal surface, plasm, and then maintain. But they maintain membrane integrity. They, their cell membrane change, but not ruptured. So only green signal came positive. And then when the apoptosis is going on, the cell membrane ruptured, start to rupture, and then your PI can combine the DNA. So when the plasma membrane integrity is lost during the late apoptosis stage, so it's the late apoptosis stage, and then PI enter the cell and the bind the cellular DNA. Okay. So, if you fix the cell, your cell membrane are ruptured. Okay? You, there are some little pore among your cell. So, all cell have positive of FRTC and PI. So, even though you're, you just, you, the fixation is being the killing the cell. Okay? So, if you fix a cell, you reject. 100% positive of apoptosis. So they will show like this. Anexin with FITC, what is the meaning? This is less intensity, high intensity. PI stain, less, high intensity. PI, no. Anexin V, no. Viable. Only FITC, Anexin V, positive, PI, less. Which means all apoptosis. No cell member rupture but only PS can be converted to the outer surface. But over time, your same membrane are damaged, lost of integrity, PI stained to enter the DNA and bind together, which means late apoptosis. So viable, early apoptosis, late apoptosis. But sometimes, they can show some positive cell. Anexin V, no, but PI, yes, which means necrosis. PS converting from the interest to the out outer cellular is the ori uh, original stereotype of apoptosis signaling. But without this one, some cell can be damaged. So that is why this only positive cell line is, the, uh, is this is one, necrosis. So normal cell with calcium, no, now no stain. Only anesin V, they are stained because this PS can be converted. Okay, but when they late apoptosis, PI can go inside and then PI can dye the DNA. Okay, and then we can use PI staining after fixation to check apoptosis. Okay, fix a cell, polymerization using ethanol, PI staining and fax reading, like this. This is a uh, PI stain intensity. This is your count. So let's say this is a 2M, 
2M means normal cell, 4M means when they are entered S phase, the DNA amount is double. This blue is in, in the between. So when you see this uh, FSC, SSCC is some kind of cell integrity or cell some width or length or cell bell volume, just imagine like that. So they correlate this EN from this part. 4N from this part because they are more big. Why is the below the EN? This yellowish orange like here, right? But what will happen if you see under this EN? Which means the DNA is fragmented, which means they are ongoing apoptosis. Okay? So from this PI staining, you can measure the S phase, this fluid S phase, and then this is 2N SN S phase amount. So, so like this, uh, this 2N G0, G1 phase, 4N, G2N mitosis phase, this in the between S phase, this we can call sub G1, which means apoptotic, apoptotic cell. So first, from FSC, SCC, you can mm, like this. And then another fax images you can do excess PI stain, this DNA amount, and why is event number. So how your cells are fractionized de depending on the DNA amount. Okay? So PI staining they can determine the DNA amount of your cell, each cell. So you can do cell cycle study and then you can see apoptotic cell. For getting apoptotic cell, you have to use high-speed centrifuge because apoptotic DNA and for the apoptotic cell debris they can easily remove from the low centrifuge. So you cannot see any sub G1. If you want to determine the sub G1, you have to use more than high speed than usual to collect the apoptotic debris. Okay, yeah. I'm going to show you two more PPT. So ICC, if you have a cell on the material, basic thing is that ICC, a palloidin actin. And then through these images, how you do? You can calculate the area, circularity. What is the meaning of the area? How each cell they are spread out? So more area, you can more quantify, quantify by image J. You can find many information, image J, how to analyze the area of each cell. And then circularity, this circularity means Circularity 1 is perfect circle. Circularity 0 means like this one, linear. So if you have some fiber, you can, this is more circularity like 0.7, but let's see, this one is around 1, circularity. All this circularity and area, you can easily quantify by image J. And then also, number of the population. Oh. Population depending on the fiber angle. Let's say your angle is like this. So you have this angle, and then from this basal level, how your cell longer axis can be converted, can be angled. So you want to say, my cell follow the angle of your fiber from the fiber angle analysis. Okay? You already know the fiber angle, and then how the longer long axis of your cell they are located from image day or from any other image tool. And then, how your cell number are retained in your material, on your material. You just simply count the cell number based on DAPI. Mm. So like this, DAPI 24, 72 hour, you can count it. So let's say I don't have much of sample. And then, if I were you, I culture the cell and membrane together and then following DAPI. The and then how you can get lizard? You can get lizard from the DAPI staining, I can know the number of the attached cell. And from the following staining, I can know area, circularity, and how they are elongated, angle. So you can get five or six figure. 
only from following the Nappy image. Okay? Even in high impact journal, they show like this. Yeah. So if you are using certain material and then culture them on the material, you have to do this, this following the active Nappy staining well and then try to get as much as information. Your cell error increase, cell error decrease, what is the number of the Nappy number, how they are elongated, how they are aligned. And the final, if you want to do focal adhesion, how your cell can attach well on your material. These beautiful images, they are not simply achieved. Very high technique. Very important thing is that calcium magnesium incorporated, incorporated PBS or HBSS should be used during washing. If you wash normal PBS, they don't have any calcium magnesium, this focal adhesion never appear. Okay? So if you do vinculin, fat, paxlin, any kind of protein or PCR related to this uh, adhesive protein, always have to do HBSS washing. Inc incorporating calcium magnesium, we have it. But in normal PBS, they don't have this calcium magnesium. They are losing. And then you can count the number of the focal adhesion per area or area of the focal adhesion per cell within four hours. Focal adhesion is always very fast within four hours or maximum one day. And then you can do acting cost staining like this. So you can have these beautiful images. So if you refer to other people, your PBS lacks calcium magnesium, so your cell adhesion will decrease. Normal media has, that, has these questions. If you want to keep your cell PBS, add calcium or magnesium chloride to your PBS or using HBSS. If you don't have HBSS, it's expensive. And then add sterilized calcium chloride or magnesium. This millimole, one millimole. And then the focal is a composition like this. alpha actinine paxlin, FAK, integrin, SRC, other things all involved. So why the calcium magnesium is important? From this focal adhesion complex, calcium magnesium, they are in the between of your protein. So they are stabilizer, calcium magnesium. But if we wash it by free FPBS, a uh, free PBS, PBS with free calcium and magnesium, this magnesium is gone, go away. And then your adhesive protein cannot be stabilized. Okay, thank you.